what up everyone as you guys know i've been talking about a lot about starting a new series we already do one with my most controversial fights and i do the fight breakdown now this is going to be one of my other ones there's one more i'm still working on but this is the one i want for you guys and it is my top five it could be my top five anything but for this one it's going to be my top five fighters to watch right now even if you're a hardcore boxing fan or a casual fan these are the top five fighters who I believe you should keep an eye out because they're exciting in one way or another and they're just give you your money's worth every time you watch them. So let's hop into my list and see who's in my top five. Starting off in my list, coming in at number five, is a fighter by the name of Jason the Banana Rosario. He is the current WBA, IBF, and IBO 154-pound champion. And now, I first noticed Rosario is when he fought Justin Deloach, a popular fighter from Atlanta. I knew Justin, I've seen a couple of his fights, but I knew nothing of Jason Rosario besides he had a good record, I believe at the time of 14-1-1 one one, with 10 knockouts, I believe. And early on, Justin was having his way using his hand speed and footwork while Rosario was just pressuring, looking for the big right hand every once in a while, looking for a left hook. Eventually, that would have success in the sixth round as Rosario would come and land a left hook right on the chin of Justin to drop him and then would change the tide in the fight in his favor. Uh, and then in the tenth round, he was able to drop Justin again to help him secure a unanimous decision. Now, after that, J Jason Rosario would go on to win a f on four fight winning streak, w stopping two of his opponents on the way to eventually getting a title shot against Julian J. Rock Williams. And... At the time, J-Rock was the one who upsetted Jared Hurd. Many people, if you remember, Jared Hurd was the one who was going to fight one of the Charlo brothers to unify the titles. But that was ruined when J-Rock stepped in and upset it in a dominating fashion, dropping Hurd in many people's eyes almost to the point where he might stop J Hurd. Hurd was tough, made a comeback, but it wasn't enough to stop J-Rock. J-Rock would win a unanimous, dominant decision. Now, Jason Rosario, not many people gave a chance, but before we keep going into that, I have to say in the four fights leading up, when I first saw Jason Rosario, he was just war, um, a one-punch knockout artist, or one-punch power puncher, trying to knock you out with one punch. The right hand, preferably, but he would also throw the left hook. But in those next four fights, that after that win, he was working on getting better, throwing combinations, and working on different punches. You can see he was slowly becoming more of a complete boxer, working the jab, working combinations. And eventually, I say that because this is what would help him against J-Rock. J-Rock was trying to box early on against um, J Jason Rosario, but you see Jason Rosario, size and power had huge effect in and it was wearing down J-Rock. And you can see little moves like throwing uppercuts. And even when J-Rock would come forward and throw that right hand, Jason Rosario would lean back and come back with his own right hand. And you could see eventually by him throwing combinations and working a lot of that pullback straight right hand, he would go in to stop J-Rock Williams in the fifth round in his own hometown of Philadelphia. And huge upset. Now, I would say... In saying all that, Jason Rosario is someone you definitely want to keep an eye on. He is a very, very exciting fighter. Like I said, he has power in both hands. But when I first watched him, he was just, like I said, trying to be a knockout artist. But now as I slowly watch him more and more as the fights go on, he has become slowly more of a complete fighter. He's working both hands. He's working up because he's working body. He's learning how to roll counter how to use different things more box aspect rather than just trying to bully you and knock you out so i think rosario is someone you should watch whether you're a hardcore boxing fan or a casual fan you just watch it every once in a while trust me if you just watch it once in a while rosario is your guy because he has power and he likes to come and knock you out and even in the fights that he didn't knock people out he has done he has shown displayed his power like he had excuse me i'm having a hard time talking in one of his fights against uh, I believe the guy's name is last name was Clark. He hit, caught him with a straight right hand that knocked him out of the ring. Surprisingly, Car Clark showed heart coming back in the ring and w went the full distance. But my point is saying is Rosario has punching power to do to make fights very very interesting, especially fights that he's losing. You can never sleep on him. So trust me, guys, he's getting better with each fight. 
He's putting combinations together. He has that one punch power to change a fight. Trust me, he's someone you want to keep an eye on, especially since he's champion and he's calling out other the, the other big champions out there. You gotta watch him. He's a fan friendly fighter. He comes to fight pressuring and throwing lots of punches, knockout punches now. So trust me, he's a fan friendly fighter. You want to watch? Don't believe me? Let's roll this tape. It's almost like Rosario in the fight, no matter at what point it is, and a big. Wow. And Rosario again, and that was. Juan come forward. Step on, he hasn't capitalized on yet. And now Clark. Has great, a great heart, great chicken. Clark is fighting like one of those fighters that. Big right hand that connects another one. And. Way with forward. Oh. Yes. Right up with that by Rosario. Nice little right hand. Uh, and here's a, a different view. You know, this is the program. You got to be able to crack a little bit. Hernandez flowing that right now. I didn't see. Was that from a punch? Did we see? Yeah, it was from a punch. It was from a jab. Four. Oh, and here you see J Rock. Both of them actually connecting. Movement and get that jab working a little bit more. So right now I got the fight even after mm. four rounds. Good hard. Third is Wits better get to him pretty oh, fast? Rosario moves in for the kill. Benji so much time left. That's That's him and his eyes are wobbling. And it's Benji Estevez, is he stopping it? He yep. stopped it. Coming in my number four spot is a Mexican fighter by the name of Jamie Munguia. Munguia is a current middleweight champion, or come, sorry, current middleweight fighter. And he is a very excited, he's a former WBO 154 pound champion. I first noticed Munguia is because it wasn't from a fight, it was actually. One of Triple G's opponents fell through and they were trying to find him an opponent and Munguia was willing and stepped up and wanted to fight Triple G but the sanctioning uh, title organizations would not sanction that fight against Munguia because he was unknown. But Munguia would eventually get his time against Saddam Ali and he in which Munguia dominated for four rounds dropping Saddam Ali for a total of four rounds before the referee stopped it. After winning the title, he would eventually defend it for a total of five times before moving up, hiring Eric Morales as his trainer in his very next fight, would fight the very tough, durable Irishman, Gary O'Sullivan. Now, if you guys haven't seen McGee, trust me, you got to watch him. He is an exciting fighter because he's the type of guy who wants to come forward throwing a lot of punches, who is big size-wise, and has a lot of power behind his punches and likes to throw, likes to throw and engage. In his reign when he was champion, he one big thing he didn't neglect was defense. So he would get hit a lot, but he didn't care. He would get hit to hit you five, six, seven, eight times. Yes, you heard me. He does like throwing punches. The man will throw punches and punches and punches and keep the pressure going. But slowly as he as he stepped up in competition, he has become a little bit of a boxer. But with the help of Eric Morales, you can see he's gotten better with his defense and slowly trying to calm himself and be more more methodical, more thinking, working behind the jab, working as a smart boxer. But in his last fight against Gary O'Sullivan, he did show that, but you can still see that um, Magia desire to fight, to bang, to throw nonstop punches to get you out of there is still in him. Eric Morales still has a lot to work on, but trust me, this is a fan-friendly fighter because it shows he's, even though... He has gotten better technically with boxing and his defense. He still has that heart in him where he wants to put on a show for the fans. And another great thing about Munguia is he's not the type of fighter that wants to fight once or twice a year. He wants to fight as many times as he can. He said, I've heard him say if he could fight three, four, five times a year, he would that would be ideal for him. So trust me, this is a guy who's active, who wants to keep on putting shows, who has power, and who likes to press the fight. So if you guys are looking for someone that pressed the fight to make the fight exciting, throwing non-stop punches with power and using his size to back someone up into a corner to stop him. Munguia is your guy, trust me. Munguia is your guy. And some of you guys may have heard of Munguia because he is have been rumored numerous times of they're trying to eventually make a showdown between Munguia and Canelo Alvarez. Before that fight can be made, I think Munguia should win a title at 160 pounds now since he's a middleweight or get a couple more fights with some top-notch opposition. I think he's not ready just yet. 
I think he needs to keep working with Eric Morales, keep fine tuning some things. But eventually, if they can move him right and get him run, keep him winning because he is currently undefeated. If they can keep him doing that and set up a showdown with Canelo on Cinco de Mayo or Mexican Independence Week in September, trust me, guys. That's a fight that will be exciting, that will be a fan-friendly fight, and that will sell out, especially if they can do it somewhere in Vegas or Mexico, preferably in Mexico, but both fighters are Mexican. I think they will be a huge following, a huge payday for both guys, and the fans will um, eventually, not eventually, will win out on that one because both guys come to fight. Canelo is a little bit more... Um, technical and defensive wide better but Munguia comes at Canelo and we know Canelo likes when people come at him but Munguia is going to be throwing punches and punches and Canelo will be trying to counter So and they were trying to knock each other out so I think this has the makings for a great fight if they both can continue their winning ways Munguia keeps getting better with every fight eventually we can see a showdown that I think for however long it lasts it will be a great fight in which the fans will win out so trust me you don't believe me let's watch this video videos to show or clips i should say to show you why i think mcgee is a force to be reckoned with and he has a lot of potential and the fans should keep an eye out on him to qualify for the olympics so he turned pro at 16 in mexico this is the first knockdown left hook he threw the right hand saddam I, I just can't thugs i can't say it enough he just huge look how big he is and he drew. this is the second knockdown he was stalking Left hook, jab, it was accumulation. Another big shot. Wobbles Ali here at the end of the set. And he goes down. Yeah, with that right hand cock. Drops him with the... Look, so as he step in, Saddam drops the... his right hand. Let's quickly sneak to Harold Letterman to see how he has it through six. Harold, bases it bombs. And Mugia says, come on, come on, give me a chance. And the withering left hook of Munguia, which gets... Look here, look here. Oh, did he go down? Oh, oh. Inouye stays He's on his feet. He almost... But he stays up. There's no knocking this man down. Oh, incredible. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. He gets a knockdown in this round three. And throwing these shots hard. And on Munguia's part. Nice combination here from Munguia. And then a big right hand. Protect yourself at all times. Do not look at the referee to save you. Big combination from Munguia at the end of this third round. And then oh. O'Sullivan. Munguia and O'Sullivan both missing wildly in that exchange. O'Sullivan. Got a jab right there by Munguia. There you go. That's how, that's how you beat a Munguia, which is what his corner wants him to do. Munguia fighting nicely off the ropes now. Nice combination landed up top from Munguia. There it is, Sergio. And there goes the white towel. It's in the ring. Coming in my number three spot is a next, another Mexican fighter by the name of Miguel Burchell. He is the current WBC at 130 pounds. I first noticed Burchell when he fought Francisco Vargas. Francisco Vargas at the time was an undefeated world champion, WBC champion to be exact, who just came off of a fight of the year candidate. I believe it eventually became fight of the year against Orlando Salido in which they went battled to a draw. Now, Burchell was someone I knew nothing about, but man, did he come and impress because as soon as the bell rang from bell one to the length round in which he stopped Vargas, he came forward pressuring, throwing nonstop punches up and down and banging Vargas nonstop. Vargas showed heart trying to fight back, but Burchell was too much for him and eventually would stop him in the 11th round when the referee came in and waved the fight off. Burchell has, ever since then, he has made six title defenses and eventually would rematch Francisco Vargas in which Vargas corner would stop the fight in the sixth round. Now, Burchell is a fan-friendly fighter, guys. He is very intelligent, has a high ring IQ, and he's a very smart boxer. He, see, here's the thing. He can box and he can put pressure. Like, he showed in... Both um, 
fights against Vargas. The first one, he showed that he can apply pressure nonstop and throw lots of punches and a lot of combinations up and down, work the body, wear you down to eventually stop you. In the rematch when he fought Vargas, Vargas would put the pressure on and friends, uh, Vargas would put the pressure on Burchell and Burchell would box more, still letting his hands go, but keeping that distance, keeping that space, working uppercuts and body shots to break down Vargas and nonstop kept wearing him down with those combinations, kept trying to stay away from the ropes, using his legs to keep moving. Eventually it would become too much where um, Vargas cornered Diaz, his coach Diaz would eventually stop this fight for him. Now, Burchell, guys, is a fan-friendly fighter. I like him a lot because he can mix it up. He's not afraid to mix it up and change his style up in a fight. He has to do whatever he can to win, and I like Burchell. He, at first, there was a lot of technical flaws that I did not like at Burchell. I didn't think he would be champion long, but Burchell, I have to say, I'm happy he proved me wrong because he is a fan-friendly fighter. He has stopped people. He goes for stoppage, and if he doesn't stop you, he's beating you down, beating you down, and I like him as a champion. Trust me, guys, check him out because, like I said, he has a high, very high ring IQ. He may not be the flashiest, but he knows what he has to do to win. He doesn't mind boxing you. He doesn't mind putting the pressure, but he throws lots of punches, and he works the body. He loves throwing multiple body shots, especially with his left hook. He's not afraid to throw two, three, four left hooks to the body and just bang you out. Like I said, a very, very fan-friendly fighter definitely knows what to do in the ring works well with combinations and pressures trust me he's a friendly fighter you haven't watched him check him out and why not let's watch the clip to see why i like birch out so much Vargas, and he's gotten better like you mentioned earlier tim and he's more an opponent's landing percentage. That's good work with the left hand. Downstairs and then upstairs from Bertrand from Vargas has met with a five-punch combination from the champ. Rocking shots off the right eye of Vargas. Tripling up that left hook. Look at Burchell on the attack here at the end of six. Halfway. from his punches. Oh, back right hand from Burchell, who follows up with a sweep. Get around that glove of Jason Sosa, lands another left hook, and here comes Sosa, but he's right in range. Exactly, you can. Is that Burchell throws back, and when he lands, he cracks with either the left or the right, and here we see Burchell, but he can. Burchell is punching to the body and, and to the head with crushing shot. shots. Nice little angle right there from Burchell. Look at the defense Burchell put on. Moved his head out of the way, came down with a vicious body shot, left hook to the body of Sosa. Reese has got to keep a close eye on Sosa. Takes a great shot, but he's taking I want to prove to you guys that I'm also a good defensive fighter. I'm not just an offensive machine, but sometimes, like you mentioned, when you're off in body work. Everybody knows I love body work, but it opens up the head shots yep. like that. Now your opponent has to worry about oh. That's a work from Burchell. He looks strong. Here we see Burchell wow. doing what Burchell does. He just throws and he lands wherever he can land. Coming in my number two spot is Nayua the Monster Inua. Forgive me if I pronounce the names wrong, but he is a Japanese fighter with a current record of 19 and 0 with 16 knockouts. Now this is important because, and he is well before I say that he is the current WBA, IBF, and Ring Magazine bantamweight champion. The reason I brought up his record because in his sixth pro fight, he won the WBC flight flyweight title, which is 108 pounds. He would make one title defense and then move up to um, capture the WBO title at 115 pounds, which he made seven successful title defenses before moving up to Bantamweight at 118, where he captured the WBA title. And then he would showdown with Nonito Denaire for the IBF title, in which he unified and won the Ring Magazine title and won the Muhammad Ali trophy. So, and he's that made him a three division champion. 
The reason I'm bringing this up because most fighters that become multiple division champions are 30, 40 fights into their career. Not even hitting 20 fights has the monster it became a three division champion in which he dominated. And if you haven't watched him, as his record speaks, he is a monster, but he's a boxer. He's a boxer with a lot of speed and power. He's a very exciting guy who works the body well, has fast hands, has a lot of power behind his punches, is not afraid to let them go, and he comes to destroy. Also, another thing I like, because in that fight, trust me, if you want to watch a fight, watch that Don No Nino De Nair fight, because he had to grow a lot, and he showed a lot of things, uh, growth in that fight. In No Nino De Nair, you guys know, the Filipino flash, he's slowly becoming a legend in the Philippines, and overall becoming a Hall of Famer, but in the smaller weight classes, has that one-punch knockout power. You guys will watch his highlights. You'll see what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. Ask Vic Darchinian. So moving on. But in that fight, Donier, had, I believe, broke the monster's left orbital bone. He broke it in the second round. And the monster was able to still go all 12 rounds with Donier. But in that fight also, the monster was hurt a couple times from right hands by Donier. But he was able to show poise, maturity, and ring awareness as he was working his defense, using his feet and ring generalship to move around, move around, and hold Donaire and slowly um, to regain his um, regain himself after being hurt. And this and it was a great fight, in which the monster was showing speed, power, and he would eventually land a left hook to the body, in which he literally made no need to drop his hands, run around the ring, and then fall down. This was a great fight, trust me, a back and forth action. Both guys were trying to knock each other out. There was no room. Even though it went full 12, it was a great 12-round action fight and displayed a lot of boxing ability. So trust me, guys, the monster is someone you guys should keep an eye out because he goes in there very technical, very fast hands, a lot of power behind his punches, and he just keeps getting better and better with each fight. So trust me, guys. Let's watch the clips to see some of his knockouts and to see highlights of that Donito Denier fight so you can see how great he really is and has the potential to be. Speed, power, technique, all of them are good. I think there's a chance for now. Pro 一度うなずいたんですけどね、カウントファイブぐらいの時に勝てるというような。しかし勝てなかった。このエグリトルような左の方に。すごいことだ。ジュリオ。ジュリオ。このお得な。チャンピオン井上尚弥が1ラウンド
and throwing lots of punches, but he's a type of he's a technical, methodical, trying to figure you out. And then once he finds your mistake, he is slowly breaking you down. And I like Estrada because for years I've been talking about him. He was when he was champion, making those five title defenses at um, flyweight. He was bang, beating a lot of top contenders back to back, and not just contenders, beating ranked fighters in the top five. He was beating back to back, even in the top eight. He was beating, but he no. I felt like he never got the credit that he deserved. He fought Chuck Liddell, if you guys know. Many people say it was early on, which they felt Estrada beat Chocolate Edo, but they were saying it was early on in his career. And it got to a point where Estrada, when he won the titles, he kept getting better and better. And he was going after Chocolate Edo, trying to get a rematch. So eventually it got to the point where Chocolate Edo said, I will only fight Estrada if you give me a million dollars. I remember that. I remember that. But here's the good thing about this. Both guys have fought under the zone. Both guys have fought under matchroom. Now... Here's the interesting thing is Chocolatito made a comeback in his last fight. He won a title in which he, against an undefeated fighter. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name right now. I probably put it around somewhere around here, the fighter that he beat. In which many people thought this was just, uh, I thought, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought, I thought that Chocolatito was just taking it for the money. But Chocolatito looked very, very impressive in having a long layoff and in which... If you guys remember, when his last loss, he got knocked out. It looked brutal that many people were writing him off saying it was over for Chocolate Edo. But he came back and he won in such an impressive fashion that I would love to see that fight between Estrada and Chocolate Edo be made. I hope they could come to terms. I hope the money's right for both guys because, trust me, both guys are exciting. If you know Chuck Liddell, he's the type of pressure fighter to come pressuring punches, not punches and punches and punches. Estrada, even though he's not a he doesn't he's not a violent puncher, he's a very good boxer and he's not afraid to mix it up sometimes with you. So I like Estrada. He's my number one because, like I said, he's I've seen him for years. I felt he's never got the proper credit. Very technical and. He's he's been beating a lot of top guys and slowly I mean now he's getting a little recognition but I don't I still don't feel like he's getting what he deserves. Let's roll to the clips and to see why I like Juan Estrada so much. <laughs> He might pick it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you have to think that Ramon Gonzalez in the blue and white. And also throw the get off me shot. Right hand back in December. And yes, there's a question mark. Side by Juan Francisco Estrada. Like that. Juan. Quadras has tried to. I, I think that Estrada from start punch. Look at that. This is the shot I believe Estrada's been looking for all night. Is the straight right hand. He touched Quadros with the left hook, but the key was to land the right hand. He landed it down. Both guys have their poker faces on. They're both tremendous punchers. Big shot there. So Rung Visai is the champ. Estrada is number one contender. That's it. Keep it on the outside, but he buries the hook. Great body shot there by Estrada. That caught So Rung Visai's attention. Just a beautiful performance. He looks like an artist in there. And that kind of made Estrada stumble backwards a little bit, and now they're both talking. And Mayo! Good body shot, he's dead! Nice right hand there from Beeman, but Estrada answers on the front foot. Beeman could go down again for a third time. Combination's very calm in there. Oh, again, the legs look wobbly for Beeman. Yeah, but notice how Estrada got off them ropes once he got caught with that right hand. You don't want to be taking those chopping right hands. In Vegas, Estrada was as big as a 28-1 to 1 favorite. He just rocked. Beeman getting really aggressive. Oh, big right hand. Has not been deterred by the knockdowns or the power shown from the champion. Oh, there's another right hand right on the button as blood seems to be coming out. Just a matter of time now. Yeah. Beeman is slow to a snail's pace. The referee steps I hope you guys enjoyed my list. That's my list of top five. When, when I say top five, guys, I'm talking about if you were to come at me for my top, I'm talking about my current top five 
boxers for you like hey recommend me five boxers these are the five boxers of course there's many more boxers out there and there's a lot more fighters that i have my eye on so if you want to hear my other fighters that i like and you want to hear a part two of my top five like this like the video and also comment to um comments below and say part two type in part two and i will give you a thumbs up or i'll say you got it part two coming so don't be afraid i will comment all you guys back that say part two so trust me this is my part um, i will do a part two if you guys ask for it. but keep an eye out because there's many more of my top five there's going to be others like my top five favorite knockouts my favorite my top five favorite rounds my top there's going to be a lot of top fives it's a series that i want to do for you guys so trust me i have plenty more but like as always guys make sure you subscribe right over here and then check my other videos out the playlist videos check them out help me out guys this by liking constantly viewing sharing them it always helps me out and it makes me want to do it more and more it makes it easier for me to do more videos like this but enough of that guys i will see you this is el castigador i'm checking out now see you guys